this Etsy shop made $550,000 in one year selling sweatshirts. In this video, we're gonna break down the five things this specific Etsy store is doing to earn half a million dollars a year and how you can implement them into your own business with just two tools. When starting out, the most important milestone to hit quickly is your first sale. Something just clicks when you start making sales and it helps you avoid getting stuck in the planning stages forever. Still, getting to that first sale can seem overwhelming. Is it better to take a broad approach or to focus just on one product? Then there's one trap that happens right here on YouTube. Seeing stores like this with huge numbers can make it tempting to emulate their exact products and target market. But what works for them may not work for you. The secret is that product ideas are like waves. By the time you get up and running, it may be too late to catch this one, but there's always another one coming. And the most important thing you can do is to learn how to create a successful listing so that when you spot a product that starts to take off in your own store, you're prepared to write it out. The first thing you want to learn is how to write a great title. Once you learn a few basic rules, you can take advantage of a powerful shortcut. Optimized titles use relevant specific keywords. Think about what potential buyers might search for when looking for a product like yours and try to consider alternative names. If you're selling a sweatshirt, it may seem obvious to put sweatshirt in the title, but you may discover that buyers search for sweatshirt and hoodie interchangeably, even though they're different. Try to use high traffic descriptors like custom, personalized, or graphic. The title length is also an important factor. Etsy allows up to 140 characters for the title. Make good use out of this space, but remember that only 40 to 50 characters will be visible in the initial search results. This means it's a good idea to place the most important keywords at the beginning of the title. Put yourself in the buyer's shoes. Knowing who your potential buyers are can help in creating a more targeted title. Are they looking for comfort, a specific theme, or maybe a gift? When you understand the unwritten rules of titles, you'll start spotting the patterns. The shortcut is to focus on best-selling product titles. What are their exact keywords, descriptors, what's in the first 50 characters, and what comes later? When we look at what the top-tier shops like this have done, we can better understand how to lay out our titles because they're putting all of the pieces together right in order to have a bestseller. A title only works as long as the photos grab the customer's attention. There's a way to get amazing real product photography that shows your ideal buyer, and I'll reveal that before the end of the video. Before that's possible though, you have to figure out how to get the initial sales. Your product photography or mock-up must connect with the buyer instantly or they'll move on. Does your photo show some kind of product or model that your customer identifies with or aspires to be? For that reason, sometimes clean product mock-ups are better than real photographs. A high quality enticing image can draw people to click on the listing out of thousands available. Keep in mind though, because your customers can't physically see or touch your products, they make their decisions largely based on photos. This can work for you with better conversions for appealing photography and against you. If the sales came from a customer that feels like the product they receive doesn't match what they saw on screen. We've had to pull slightly enhanced photographs and inaccurate mock-ups before due to customers buying based on some aspect of a product photo that didn't represent the shirt. This happened with white shirts taken under cool lighting or at sunset, leading to customers thinking it was either a light blue or a natural toned fabric. Sales from customers that feel misled after receiving the item are painful for any seller. Photos need to accurately depict size and color because misleading images can lead to bad reviews and returns. Etsy uses image recognition technology as part of its search algorithm, so having relevant and high quality photos can help improve your search ranking. To make the most of your photos, you should use all 10 photo slots that Etsy provides to show different angles, close-ups of details, and the product in use. From the shop we're looking at, we see they use stock photos but use different angles and models for different colors, giving variety and a more realistic looking product page. They have also listed a size chart as one of the photos. Although not necessary, this is an option. Earlier we talked about how customers may use different search terms for the same item. But what if someone was searching for a particular style but they can't decide between a sweatshirt and a hoodie? Point number three, provide options within your Etsy listing. This allows your customers to tailor the product to their needs or preferences, which can help increase sales. There's a balance to strike here though. Some options are great, but too many can overwhelm your customers into decision paralysis or equally bad, cheapen your brand by making it look like a flea market stall. Offering a few different color options can appeal to a wider range of customers. As a rule of thumb, with customization options, it's often optimal to provide only two to five choices. This way, you can capture the largest percentage of buyers while staying focused.
list. Behind the scenes, too many options can complicate the ordering process. And if you produce or ever plan to produce your own products, it can potentially increase mistakes as well as massively increase your blank inventory. Speaking of producing things yourself, this video is sponsored by lasertransfersupplies.com. If you're trying to grow your online retail business, but you find yourself frustrated by the profit margins from print on demand or drop shipping, it may be time to take control of your production with a direct to film or white toner printer from lasertransfersupplies.com. I personally know these machines are workhorses. While building my first Etsy store that generated $175,000 my first year, I went from a 20% profit margin, which is typical with a print on demand, to a 49% profit margin with an iColor 800 white toner printer. They're offering our viewers up to $500 off if you use the code E&E 2023. I'll leave a link in the description below. I noticed the shop we're looking at was currently running a sale. This is the fourth tactic we'll look at in creating a top producing shop on Etsy. Everyone loves a good deal, but a good deal doesn't have to mean you sell your products too cheap. Sales work in two ways. Some people are just wired to look for a deal. Some stores price their shirts with the sale in mind and use this tactic from the start. Alternatively, if you start to see people adding your listings to their cart or favoriting them, a sale might convert some of these people who are hesitant to purchase your products at full price. Another reason that was relevant for my shop was to control inventory. You can run sales on items you want to move and hold quicker selling items at full price. If we're looking at average order value, you can increase this by offering a discount when a certain amount is purchased from your shop. A key feature with Etsy sales lies in the time frame they're offered. They create a sense of urgency, giving you a time limit on how long they have left. However, it's important to use sales and offers strategically. Offering constant heavy discounts can diminish the perceived value of your products, and customers may hesitate to purchase at regular price. It's also essential to ensure that you're still making a profit when pricing items on sale. Always calculate your cost carefully before setting sale prices. One final point, and arguably the most important, is social media outreach, specifically Instagram for Etsy. This is where your engagement within your niche, visual marketing, and brand awareness will come from. You can generate your own following by having people tag you in their posts. This creates social proof in the most real way possible. The shop we're viewing here does the same. I scoped out what they were tagged in and posting, and they have a massive following of people who love their products. Remember earlier when I said you get amazing real product photography? When your buyers tag you in their Instagram photos, often they're taking ideal product photography for you. They're cluing you into the best moments of their life and give your prospective buyers an aspirational glance at what they could look like, doing the things and going the places they imagine. In your apparel, building trust in your brand builds its following and gets your shop noticed in the sea of sellers on the platform. Utilizing social media has its benefits of market research as well. Asking questions, taking polls, and staying connected posting stories allows you to make adjustments or test new products in a smaller pool of people. One thing to remember is social media requires effort and engagement. It's not just about making posts, it's about commenting, engaging, and keeping up with trends. It can be a significant time investment, but it balances out as a powerful tool for growing your Etsy business. When we started including a wash instruction thank you card with every order with a request for buyers to tag us on Instagram, our following and engagement skyrocketed. That fueled product photography that helped build our Instagram, sell more on Etsy, and influenced original new product designs. Now that you have the how and the Etsy piece of the puzzle, it's time to start looking for your next big wave.